Hello, welcome to Neoscribe. Our bodies naturally contain incredible regenerative capabilities. Our skin cells are constantly regenerating and are replaced every 27 days. And our bodies are capable of making about 2 million red blood cells every second. Unfortunately, some of our organs like the heart and brain do not have regenerative properties. But that is where the promise of regenerative medicine comes in, a field that is both fascinating and booming. Regenerative medicine involves creating living, functional tissues to repair or replace parts of the body that have been damaged and cannot heal themselves. And it's a market valued at around $13 billion and it's expected to grow to $38 billion by 2024. There are so many examples of incredible research in regenerative medicine to cover, but first we need to briefly cover stem cells. Stem cells are the vital building blocks of the human body, replenishing the cells of our blood, bone, skin, and various organs. There are three kinds of stem cells, adult stem cells, embryonic stem cells, and induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs. Adult stem cells are found in many of our organs and replenish the cells of their respective systems. And these are the most manageable stem cells to use because everyone has their own supply. However, adult stem cells are multipotent, meaning they can only develop in a certain type of cells. Embryonic stem cells, on the other hand, are pluripotent, meaning they can develop into any kind of the more than 200 cell types in the human body. They can also divide and multiply endlessly. Embryonic stem cells are found in embryos that are just a few days old, called blastocysts. At this stage, the embryo contains around 150 cells, and within that, there is a cluster of 20 to 30 embryonic stem cells, called the inner cell mass. Embryonic stem cells are harvested by extracting the inner cell mass. The process poses social and ethical concerns because the extraction destroys the embryo. However, I need to point out that the embryos used for research come from fertility clinics donated by individuals that go through in vitro fertilization, or IVF. And the IVF process leaves excess embryos, and there are an estimated 600,000 excess embryos in the United States alone. So the embryos used for stem cell research are embryos that would otherwise be discarded as quote-unquote biomedical trash. Alright, so that leaves us with induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs, which is where things get far more fascinating. iPSCs are made from reprogramming adult stem cells to gain the characteristics of embryonic stem cells. As their name suggests, iPSCs are pluripotent like embryonic stem cells. They can develop into any cell type in the body. And iPSCs do not pose ethical and social concerns because they are obtained without the destruction of embryos. Another advantage of iPSCs is that the cells match the body that they are extracted from. Alright, so stem cells play a fundamental role in regenerative medicine, which is broken down into multiple concentrations. There's a lot to cover in one video, so we're going to focus on two concentrations that I find most interesting. First is tissue engineering, which involves implanting biological compatible scaffolds where new tissue is formed. Over the past 30 years, millions of patients have been treated by some form of tissue engineering, like skin grafts, supplemental bladders, and small arteries. However, tissue engineering still plays a small role in patient treatment overall, and the procedures are still experimental and very expensive. Most of the examples of tissue engineering treatment involve soft tissues. That is why the work being done by Osteopore stands out to me. Osteopore is based out of Singapore and commercializes 3D printed scaffolds made from proprietary polymer material used to regenerate bones. The amazing thing is as the bones grow, the material naturally dissolves, leaving the healthy bone tissue. Since 2016, osteopore products, which are FDA approved by the way, have been used in over 20,000 surgical procedures, such as repairing skulls with burr holes from brain surgery. Researchers from Osaka University recently used iPSCs to grow heart muscle cells that were transplanted to the damaged areas of a patient's heart. The patient of this landmark procedure is the first of 10 in a trial that will take place over the next three years. The trial is promising because the procedure has a potential to significantly reduce the need for heart transplants. And even though iPSCs are still expensive, its application in this case is easier than finding suitable donor hearts. Alright, the second concentration that we're going to cover is cellular therapies that involve reconstructing diseased or damaged tissues that aren't able to regenerate naturally by injecting adult stem cells to the damaged area. Researchers all around the world are working to apply the power of stem cell therapies for a vast array of health issues such as leukemia, diabetes, stroke, spinal cord injuries, and many more. Most of the research at this time is still very early and have not led to FDA approved treatments or even clinical trials. One example is researchers at Stanford performed a study in 2016 injecting iPSCs near the damaged areas of the brains of 18 stroke patients. 12 months later, half of the patients experienced significant improvements. 
One of the patients, Sonia Kuntz, could not raise her right arm or speak clearly due to her stroke, but she was able to raise her right arm and speak clearly the very next day after the injections. Another interesting study involves the potential treatment for diabetes, which comes from the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, Missouri. The researchers at the university used iPSCs to develop beta cells which are found in the pancreas that produce, store, and release insulin. They injected the beta cells into mice that could not produce insulin, and the cells were able to control the blood sugar of the animals for months. But the scientists still have a lot of work to do to reach human trials as they need to figure out how to safely implement the cells into humans. And there are currently over 7,000 clinical trials involving stem cells registered with the FDA. However, I was surprised to learn that there are stem cell clinics in the United States that are falsely advertising that their therapies were reviewed and approved by the FDA, when in fact they were not. The FDA published a warning to the public about this issue back in September and is taking steps to crack down on these clinics. You see, there have been a few terrible incidents involving these clinics, such as a woman in Georgia going blind after receiving stem cell injections, and other extreme cases include kidney failure and paraplegia. That being said, regenerative medicine is a promising field and it gives us hope that we will all be enjoying life for many years to come. Alright, so this was the first episode of a brand new series that explores topics suggested by subscribers. So I'd like to thank Balding Patriot for suggesting this topic to kick off this series. I started this series to get out of my comfort zone and explore things that I usually don't cover on this channel. Even though I will gravitate towards more of the random topics for this series, I will definitely consider other topics for regular videos. So all ideas are welcome. Alright, I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe and I'll see you on the next journey.